Hi there and welcome to the grand finale of the Christmas scrapbooking and crafting for 2015. Uh, this will be my last uh, Christmas video for this time and uh, I will share with you my Christmas card process and also the layouts that I have not made uh, process videos of. So I'll share two different uh, Christmas cards that I made and uh, then a whole bunch of layouts. Uh, the first card that I'm going to uh, show you is uh, one that I did for my crafty friends. So these <laughs> were made for special people that would appreciate the, the work that I uh, put into it. I have realized over the years that not all people uh, enjoy uh, handcrafted uh, cards and uh, just <laughs> these things that we uh, tend to see as as normal and fun. <laughs> uh, some even think it is uh, uh, too much work uh, put into the, the stuff that they feel guilty because they didn't even send cards. So <laughs> uh, it's 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 a different mindset, I, I guess. But uh, these stamps, all of them, are from a Swedish brand called Hänglar och Stänglar. And it is not uh, active anymore. Uh, there are no new stamps from this um, company. And it hasn't been for several, several years. I have um, a rather big collection of them. And uh, I will be coloring these uh, images with my pro marker pens and here i'm just showing you the swatch that i have made of the ones uh, that i have i have been coloring with the pro markers for over 10 years now or no not over eight years now i bought them when my uh, daughter was uh, a tiny baby and uh, i love them i have no intention to start using another uh, coloring method method as long as I can find uh, these pens. They suit my style very very well and there are enough colors to just uh, keep me <laughs> satisfied and uh, I, I love the technique. I'm stamping on watercolor paper with uh, Adirondack Pitch Black from Ranger and uh, the, I have the, the ink pad that is um, uh, beige in uh, the actual box and not the I think the other one is so white mm, and that's the one you need when you're coloring with pro markers pens I don't do anything special or fancy with my coloring I just color like you did when you were a kid and uh, for me that's okay <laughs> that that's my process and and I usually do like this I just stamp a bunch of uh, different uh, images and then I take one uh, color at a time so that I can just finish the coloring in a quick and uh, e easy uh, way. And uh, I try to keep uh, my uh, color choice to uh, a minimum. I have realized that when I choose too many colors it gives the the total impression um, it, the total impression becomes a bit uh, uh, hard for the eye to to cope with so <laughs> I try to just choose a uh, um, small number of uh, of the colors and and go with those when you uh, color in the skin tone of the of the little girl there. I, I always feel that it's like magic when she comes to life with the, the, the skin tones. Uh, I guess you have heard about another Swedish stamp brand. It's called Magnolia. And these two brands, uh, Hengler Strängler and uh, Magnolia, they kind of appeared uh, at the same time uh, and became popular at the same time. And uh, then it, it kind of became either you liked the <laughs> the one or the other and uh, I, I always liked Hengler and Strängler more 
and uh, then they stopped making stamps and that was very very sad uh, I for a while I kind of felt brainwashed to like magnolia stamps but uh, I, I can't say that I enjoy those anymore I, I think they have way too big eyes uh, for my liking so I don't buy uh, stamps like this uh, any longer I have a couple of magnolias but I don't color with them uh, that much. All of these images are well-known Swedish symbols of Christmas, like the lingonberry and the saffron bread buns, the goat and the braided hearts, paper hearts, and the gingerbread biscuits that I'm coloring right now. And to go with that, I really love to, to color this uh, girl uh, dressed up uh, as a, a baker or a chef. I, I think uh, she is uh, really easy to um, like color her for a lot of different occasions. You just choose the uh, colors of her uh, clothes differently. So I, I have made lots of uh, birthday cards with her um, like baking cakes for, for the birthday person and, and that's uh, really fun I think it's a versatile uh, stamp I'm really sorry that I'm out of focus but I think that will become better in just a couple of seconds what I do now is a, a, a trick or a thing that I learned when I started uh, making uh, or coloring uh, stamped images and that's that I go around all the images with a warm dark warm gray uh, marker to create somewhat of a shadow this helps with the cutting because I plan to cut out all these images with my fine scissors and uh, then I will piece them together to form a scene uh, on the Christmas card so I go through all the outlines uh, with this um, warm grey pen and uh, it becomes a very nice and finished uh, impression. It gives a very um, nice impression to the final uh, work. I fill in all those large gaps there by the horns but I will later come back with the scissors and just uh, detail cut uh, in that uh, inner area there. Now the coloring is all done and this is the sheet that I end up with and uh, now comes the cutting. I use a very um, sharp and small uh, pair of scissors and uh, it is uh, the one that I use for all my detail cutting. It is uh, very uh, sharp. Uh, <laughs> this is a bit scary, I write there, because it, it is it is scary to cut into that uh, lovely sheet. I, it is uh, like uh, <laughs> ruining the the whole impression for a while uh, until it's time to to start uh, assembling the the card. So now I just uh, cut around everything, and I keep uh, the that. Uh, gray line uh, so that the I, you, it's still visible around the image. Uh, my uh, advice for detail cutting like this is to keep your scissor hand uh, still and uh, just um, turn the paper that you are cutting in. So if you just watch my right hand there you see that I barely uh, move it at all. So that's, that's a really um, good uh, advice I think for, for getting a, a clean cut and a, a good uh, work um, like um, the, the ergonomy of, of the whole process. So I don't really mind cutting uh, detail cutting. Uh, it is uh, it, it might seem tedious but it's actually a quite a, a fast process. Uh, at least when you know that there are only these. <laughs> if you have hundred more it might uh, be painful for your hand but 
uh, when I'm just making one card like this it's it's okay and uh, quite fun actually to see those uh, cat uh, images uh, form that pile. Now it's time for the actual card making and I'm working with 12 by 12 basil card stock in the red kind of color that I <laughs> get my hands on. <laughs> I think this one was really really nice. It's a deep dark uh, red and uh, it suits my my style very very well. And this is the card that I will make. I have a piece of checkered or it's like kitchen checkered <laughs> uh, uh, pattern paper that I want to form into a curtain uh, at the top of the card and on top of that I will place the decorations, the lingam berries and the braided hearts and uh, it will form like a Christmas curtain uh, as a border or a top topper of the card. So I just place the curtain on foam squares and uh, then I place my uh, images the way I want them and uh, I will plate place the goat down with ordinary uh, double uh, sided adhesive and then I'll adhere the cart and the girl with foam dots just to give some dimension to the scene. Since this is a, a card uh, and not a scrapbooking uh, layout, uh, I try to be <laughs> a bit more um, uh, like, I, I try to place more uh, foam dots than I would have when it was a layout. <laughs> Just because it, it will be handled and it will be pulled out of the envelope and, and uh, I, I want it to, to uh, stay together. I try to just turn those uh, lingam berries uh, a bit, bit differently uh, for the three there so that it doesn't look too uh, much the same. And then I'm taking my Uniball Signal uh, white pen there and I'm making some faux stitches along the edge of the card. I think it gives a really nice border and it's something that I often do when I make cards. And this is the finished card. I think I made five or six of these for the Christmas cards this year and uh, the rest of them I'll show you just uh, in a couple of minutes. They are much more fast and they are more <laughs> mass produced. Uh, these are made with a lot more heart and, uh, and love for, for the craft and the season. I am tying a little bit of twine there so that it looks like she is pulling the cart in a ribbon and uh, I just thread it with a needle. So here's the finished card. I'm very pleased with this one. <laughs> it's it's uh, very much my style. Mm? Uh, now you'll see the process for the many cards that I made. I think I made almost 30 of this kind. I stamped an image in black. I used the Stason black ink, and uh, then uh, on watercolor paper, and then I sprayed it with uh, uh, Heidi Swap uh, Shine uh, in gold, and uh, I dried the whole thing with a piece of paper uh, just to get away the excess, because uh, it's it gets very sticky <laughs> if it's too much. And now I'm just uh, taking all the red cardstock that I had <laughs> and I make uh, card bases uh, 6 by 6 uh, inches uh, big. And uh, I don't have a bone folder but uh, this uh, plastic ruler does the job just as well. <laughs> then I had lots of um, like Project Life like cards from old Simple Stories collections. And they are both in uh, 3 by 4 and uh, 4 by 6 and uh, 3 by 3 squares and oh, you name it. And uh, they are in this kind of muted um, traditional uh, old fashioned uh, style. And I thought those uh, went very well with this uh, gold shimmery uh, stamped image. 
So these stamped images won't be colored in in any other way than this uh, gold shine. And it's just a silhouette, so uh, I don't think that I could have colored it in, in any good way anyway. And I'm just cutting these uh, different uh, cards into sizes that can fit on the card bases. And then I'm placing the uh, stamped images on foam uh, tape and onto the uh, like the paper, uh, layered papers. And no card get sim becomes similar to any other because I just have one of each of these uh, pieces, <laughs> card pieces. So it's just all, all get individually made. But uh, I'm getting rid of a lot of old products that I don't want to use in my scrapbooking. Even though I wanted to keep everything very simple on these cards, I wanted to add something a bit more. So all these cards will get some kind of ribbon treatment. And most of them will get ribbon tied around the stamped piece. So I'll show that just in a bit. And uh, I'm using uh, two kinds of ribbons, I think, for, for the cards. And it's the uh, like nature colored one with gold and the red, green and white baker's twine. And uh, I'm just tying a little bow there and I'm adhering the uh, twine some with some liquid adhesive uh, below the uh, stamped image so that it won't fall off. So it's just to secure it a little bit more. The film you see now it is times eight, <laughs> so it might look like a bit in the industrial. <laughs> but but I remember it was really nice. It was a bit therapeutical, and uh, I felt that I could do just what I wanted <laughs> with with all these stuff that I had on my on my table, and uh, I, I tried to to do my very best on each card and make it to work and make it special. So, so it was, it was nice work, and I, I felt really good about the whole idea, and about the cards. I, I felt that I could send them to family and friends, and and feel good about it, and that's a big, <laughs> a big thing <laughs> for me, I guess. Uh, the, these cards I made a lot of them, and I, I guess most people that get them are more interested in the inside of the cards. Uh, I write, uh, I handwrite uh, just a sentiment on the inside of the card. I write uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and then uh, all of our names. And then I add a photo of the kids. And I guess most people are most interested in that photo uh, because I try to take a really nice photo of the kids every year and a bit Christmas themed. And uh, I'll sh soon I'll show you the card for the other oh, photo for this year and uh, I I think that the tradition of uh, sending Christmas cards is is really really sweet and really nice uh, I guess a lot of people uh, don't do it anymore and, and a couple of my friends for example they they decided to uh, give the the money for uh, to a charity instead of uh, um, sending cards and and I totally understand that that was really really uh, sweet so I, I do understand that but this is also part of my uh, Christmas uh, getting in the Christmas spirit <laughs> process so I, I kind of uh, want to to do it <laughs> I do uh, donate to charity as well <laughs> mm. uh, so I just this is just the process I'm piecing together and layering just to, to make it look special. Every card was special. Here are some of the cards that I made during this process and a close-up of some of them. These have been published on my uh, Instagram uh, earlier. And uh, here are the... Uh, here is the photo that was enclosed in the Christmas cards of the two kids. 
Yeah, that's a really nice photo, I think. Now it's time for some layouts. I made so many Christmas layouts and uh, <laughs> I used up lots of old products. I think this is Bobani papers that I've had for ages. This is my son from 2014 in his Christmas clothes, surrounded by a homemade watercolor frame. This is a layout I made for a, a sketch challenge over at Victoria Marie. Here is the making of our gingerbread house last year, or 2014, and some gift opening photos of my son. This is with the Cartabella collection. I made lots of layouts with Cartabella papers and I just loved it. I took out all the papers and embellishments that I had and then I just made layouts. <laughs> I sat in the sofa by the TV and I had spread everything out in, in the sofa and on the table and everywhere and I just made layouts. It was lovely. A multi-photo uh, collage with uh, us building Lego and here's Christmas dinner from uh, oh, two years back at least and uh, some gift opening uh, photos and I've used lots of those uh, large wood veneers that I bought from China uh, a while back and uh, I think that I could just sprinkle them everywhere. <laughs> these are lovely photos of my daughter when she was really small <laughs> and these are a bit uh, when she was a bit uh, older. <laughs> Still very sweet. Uh, baking gingerbread biscuits uh, together by the kitchen table. Really fun work. We always do that. And some playing in the snow. I used up lots of cards and lots of uh, really sweet uh, papers. Shoveling. Every day I'm shoveling. <laughs> and some more uh, Lego building on the 25th. Uh, I love those photos. More uh, playing in the snow. These are really old, 2013. And these are even older. I think it says 2010. <laughs> And I was pregnant with my son, so it's just one kid in the photo. More Lego. We always build a lot of Lego on Christmas Day. We started at uh, uh, 4.45 on Christmas Day with Legos. <laughs> and uh, here are the table from many years back when we had a Christmas dinner over at our place. And here's some more snow photos. The last layout of this layout share, share is the only one with photos from 2015. These are the Christmas card photos and uh, the Christmas card photo and one more from the same photo shoot uh, and uh, I think the, car the photos are absolutely adorable and I'm very pleased with this layout as well. I love the papers from Simple Stories Cozy Christmas Collection. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. This is Osa. Bye.